but we have an awesome night in store for you. How many of us are, are, are ready to have a good time? I will say this, uh, tonight you all are, are an awesome part of a great effort that's taking place right now in Macon, Georgia. Um, we have the Tubman African American Museum that is uh, currently up now in Macon, uh, which is going to be an awesome asset to our community uh, to be able to teach our generations and generations after us about the history of Harriet Tubman and other African American leaders and trailblazers. Uh, that have been impactful in our community. So I hope that you can come by and see the contributions that you're making and see them at work um, in, in Macon, Georgia, if you have an opportunity. Some of us are probably from Macon. Anyone here from Macon? It was. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to stop by and see the great work um, that has taken place here. We do have some guests um, joining us tonight and you'll have a chance to meet them a little bit later. Um, but tonight our show is a little unique. We're bringing a few things to you, not only to entertain, but also to educate uh, you about the history of Harriet Tubman. And most of us have probably read about her in storybooks and history books, so we're hoping to bring some of the things that you've heard, some of the things that you've been told to life about a mighty woman, um, which for many of us would not be here if it had not been for her efforts. Um, so we hope that you enjoy the show. Sit back and relax and get ready for the oracles of Harriet Tubman. As many of you can imagine, life as a slave ain't been the easiest lot. There are many reasons why I shouldn't be here to send you this letter. But as a slave in Maryland, I endured many cruelties. To this day, my back, it, it carries evidence of the slavery's horrors. However, uh, my survival depends largely on my faith through illnesses, through beatings and drudgery, I survived because I believed. You see, I learned early that my God was bigger than the words from Ephesians and Colossians, and that many slave masters repeated, demanded that slaves obey their masters. I learned to look beyond the professions of pity and and appearances of substance in the people around me, and faith and morality are not evident in nice clothes or smooth talk. I possess neither of those things. The true measure of faith is the ability to show God's love by treating others well. Now you see, I, I could treat others well, I had not to realize that I could be what my faith teaches me, that, that God believes in me and that therefore I should believe in myself. But God sent me a father who valued me, who loved me, who insisted that the space of a system that treated me like a beast, that I was important. I believed who God was and who he could be. I, I made it my mission to help others and and believe in them and myself as well. This is my mission. Why at the age of 13 I stood against mistreatment of another slave. Though I was struck with an arm, with an arm weight and forever afflicted for these decisions, I was unbowed before man. This faith is why I took on the task of shepherding others to freedom Freedom through the underground railroad. I wanted to help others to see their worth. Even after my death, I would like for my property to be used to help others. And I want to serve my fellow mankind. For service to others is the ultimate service of God. Well, you see, folks, I'm an old woman now. But I see 
that the world is rapidly changing. More and more people are moving away from seeing themselves as part of their communities. It seems in fashion that many people would prefer to embrace a sense of individuality than leave little rooms to care for others. Therefore, I would like for you to begin to tell me how you're gonna utilize your duties for your community. What is it, my people? How are you going to continue on my legacy? My dear Harriet, it is nice hearing from you. In your letter, you spoke about your leadership capabilities, as well as what you sacrificed to become known as the great leader we look up to today. I felt that what you did in leading hundreds of slaves to freedom, no one else could have done. And for that, we thank you. In your letter, you asked me, what am I doing in my everyday life to ensure the rights and privileges that are in American citizenship are being carried through. First, I encourage others to value education for it is a privilege to have the opportunity to be educated. Your legacy has provided evidence that the ability to obtain an education is a privilege that should be accessible to everyone. Nevertheless, many do not take the advantage to learn. My family raised me to take full advantage of my education. I use those teachings in my school life to lead and encourage others to attend their classes because education is not free. I'm here to give and encourage others to ensure we all not take this opportunity for granted. Secondly, leading by example, in today's society, many children are learning not to only stand up for themselves, but also to stand up for others when they witness any types of wrongful doings. I also, being a leader, make sure that we all, despite our differences, get treated with the same respect and dignity. Another quote that has stuck to me as a child was two wrongs do not make a right. So instead of joining in on someone else wrongdoings to a person, be the one to step up and show your capabilities as a leader by not allowing the situation to continue. You may not think so, but you have made a great impactful impact for the people of your future, our present, by showing how a great proactive leader should think and types of actions to take when situations are not ideal. You stood up for what you believed in and was not discouraged. And that's what that is what makes a true leader an impactful leader. Thank you for all that you have done. So I challenge for all the leaders to put down your guns of inequality and to grab the, tor the Tubman torch of trailblazers and to make a difference. the injustice I face on a regular basis, 
I personally make it my mission to treat everyone equally with love. My goal is to do everything within my power to continue your legacy by empowering others to overcome life's obstacles. I will treat everyone the same no matter what color, gender, and religion with absolute respect and heartfelt love. You hated to be in bondage and you hate to see other people suffer. By rescuing slaves to the north, you did not allow the risk of being captured to stop you. When I was younger, I was bullied simply because I stood out from the crowd. However, as you can see, those bullies did not stop me from getting my education. Most importantly, you have struggled for freedom for your fellow mankind. Your strong faith and passion have benefited your struggle. Your message has inspired me to create my own Underground Railroad to success by lifting up others and teaching them how to do the, how to leave a legacy. As for me, I am proud to say that my legacy is being created as we speak. As I ponder upon the song lyrics of Kelly Gordon, I realize that my life is not only about me. Why do you ask? Because he ain't happy. He's my Mrs. Tubman, as a person who was spiritually strong and wasn't afraid to help the voiceless, I know you want to hear my reply on how my actions demonstrate my desire to uplift others and how I have faith in God. Faith is a strong and powerful word. It is a way to have confidence, to have trust in God, and to pour out your heart to him. I have been through an obstacle in my life. I was suffering from pain, weakness, and distress. I was constantly battling with rejection, intimidation, and dealing with obnoxious people in an environment where I thought I would feel safe, secure, and be proud to build a foundation to pursue my dreams and to reach for the stars. I was ostracized and talked down to as if I was not a human being. I would feel like an outcast every, whenever I would try my hardest to fit in with the crowd. With all the emotional and verbal abuse of others, I felt insecure and I was down with myself. I was told numerous of times that I wasn't going to be anything. Being in that classroom was like being in this, in this dark room filled with little demons. I was helpless. I was defenseless. However, I didn't give up. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed to God and asked him to give me the guidance and the strength. See, I have faith in God, and I still do to this day. When no one believed in me, God believed in me. God knew that I, will go to, that I will become somebody someday. He and my family knew that there was something in me that was special and inspiring. See, I could have left those students who were, down, who were downing me and putting me down get the best of me. 
But fortunately, there are two, di two things, two things that have kept me crawling. That is faith and God. As now a college student, I am now planning a mission to uplift other people. My mission is to travel throughout my community and reach out to young children who are suffering the same pain that I have suffered as a child. Not only do I want to help young children who are dealing with bullying, low self-esteem, and insecurity, but I, but I also want to help adults who are in a path of self-destruction and, and are struggling to adapt in the real world. You see, Mrs. Tubman, I'm not doing this for attention, and I'm not doing this for monetary purposes. I am doing this with the kindness of my heart. Faith is what keeps you going in life, because without faith, we will all be fragile. I hope you enjoyed my speech, Mrs. Tubman. I will put your heart at ease, and my faith in God will always be forever. Thank you. My dear friend Harriet, it is evident by, by your continually journey that you definitely possess strength. In your last letter, you posed the question, how would I define strength? I define strength as that inner ability or drive that causes a person to go beyond his or her normal ability. As you were transporting slaves into the free land, many wanted to stop in the midst of the journey. But you had to take encouraging words and be the voice and take necessary actions for the journey to continue. Also, there was a $40,000 reward offered for your capture. Your journey was purpose driven by God. My journey is quite different. It is overcoming low self-confidence. I had to make that decision in my life, and I had to stand up for myself. During my early childhood and adulthood, people would take advantage of my passive nature. But by the grace of God, I had decided to love myself and stand up for myself. You see, our journeys are quite different, but they're still one of the same concerning strength. So I just want to encourage you that strength is that inner drive that everyone possesses. And I encourage our black men and women to act Next, we will have a special presentation from Horace McClain. Please help me welcome him to the I've been built and I 
your last letter and, and share more about my history. You see, after all, a, a story about my past is, is incomplete without mentioning my faith. I know it's, it's a surprise to some that I continued on to the dangerous path along the Underground Railroad, but even I already successfully made the journey. But my decision to continue on wasn't an idle decision. It was my calling, you see, my, my, my calling from God. Because he called me to do such things, I knew it could be done. In every instance where fear tried to stop me, my faith overruled. At many points in my life, I was violently reminded that my independent black mind was a strong desire for freedom. It wasn't considered disobedient, especially when it came from a black woman. I still have headaches from the time a white plantation foreman decided that he would, you know, teach me a lesson. He struck me as hard as he could with that arm weight. But you know, that was his message to others that me and me standing up for slaves was not acceptable. Despite his savage attempts to break my spirit, he only reminded me of my faith, the way in which I still fueled with my desire to help my fellow brothers and sisters even when such violence would come and result, I knew that nothing but God would remind me of my purpose and assure me that my walk would not be alone, that he would be with me the whole way. 
You may face different issues. You may face injustice, just as I did in my own earlier years. But when you do, I encourage you to find one thing, one person, one idea that will help you press forward. I saw the need to fight against slavery for myself and for others. However, my faith served as my biggest asset. Look at your surroundings. What is it that you see as a need? What are you gonna do to encourage others to do the same? Well, hear you? I feel that there are three current needs in society. Unity, positive role models, and education. First and foremost, unity. A prerequisite for unity is self-honesty. Psychologically, if you believe you are more or less attracted due to the level of mel melatonin in your skin, then you are denying the equality of the human race and accepting the lie that we are separate, but we are not separate. We are one. Second, positive role models. One of the biggest needs in society are role models. The fact that many African Americans are growing up in single parent homes is slowing down the advancement of colored people. The most effective way to change this is for us as a people to go out in the community and make a change. There are several ways to do this. I personally decided to become a coach and a tutor at the E.P. Roberts Center and make a change in several youths' lives, teaching them how to defy the odds without excuses and knowing in life nothing is given, it's earned. Last but not least, education. Hosea 4, 6 states, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. To break the cycle of poverty and the lack of education, not just as it relates to e income or material acquisition, but how it relates to us in the mind. If you, if you attribute all your impureness to your race, then you are accepting the barrier of segregation. It all starts in the mind. If in the mind you are inferior, then in your lifestyle, including the way you carry yourself, will speak that. Lastly, I feel that unity, positive role models, and education is the essential need in this generation. In conclusion, Nelson Mandela said, the most powerful weapon that we have is education. The chain. Let me try. Love. And in conclusion, Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. I challenge each and every one of you to use your weapons wisely. Harry, I never thought I would have this opportunity to discuss this with you. I've been eagerly waiting to speak about your leadership and how it has inspired me as an African-American male. I'm so grateful to have you as an influence in my life. Harry, sacrifice is part of the equation of leadership and you embody every single bit of that. Especially when it came to you risking your freedom, life, and health. Just to assist others who could not, did not, and were too afraid to help themselves. With that being said, what you did for others, to me, is true definition of leadership. Your life is a reflection of servanthood. And Harriet, I can only hope one day to mirror your actions. Because in the world I live in today, there are few representations of true leadership in the millennial generation that we live in. Just because some still 
are accepting the doubts of the Jim Crow culture that we are inferior, and we give in to temptation and shrink from the world, and we're told to accept our place and to avoid risk. However, as a leader of today, I will not choose to settle for that place. I will stray away from the risk of today. I will accept nothing, nothing but excellence. I will risk my life to be a catalyst for change. And I will break the barrier of being a statistic, being marginalized, being disenfranchised, and I will break the barrier of being reduced to less than what I worked to be when I was born. It's in you and I both. Just like you, Harriet, I was chosen to have to carry the torch of change so that the flame of injustice will not die with neither you nor I. So when you ask, would I stand amongst the crowd and watching the police silence as the liberties of my loved ones are stripped away, or would I stand up and fight for what's right? Well, as Malcolm X said, a man who stands for anything, stands for nothing, will fall for anything. As a man of the day, I choose not to fall. I choose to stand. I leave you with two questions. Will you stand? And if not, why not? That reason you just came up with is not good enough. You know why? Because somebody's already stood for you. and leadership skills. And some of the students that you heard tonight were so petrified to speak in front of people. All of the speeches that you heard, they produced themselves. So not only did they, <laughs> not only are they committed to be able to write their own speeches, but, but to get out here and to express themselves. It's vulnerable up here speaking in front of people. Um, and some of them were so shy coming into the club, and, and you see now that they have gone past that shyness and are able to present to you tonight. So, next on our program, I have for you a special presentation. Join me, ladies and gentlemen, for Harriet Tubman, Her Story. simple, sweetheart, but we live in reality. It, just, it can't happen like that. But, Dad, we can make it reality. Baby, these are different times now. You gotta get, we gotta go over the flow. But aren't you sick and tired of the master telling us what to do? Don't you want to be free to do as you please? I wish it, I wish it was that simple, baby, but life just can't be like that. We gotta go over the flow. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be hard, but You'll get used to it eventually when we get older, okay? Yes, sir. All right, let's get back inside. It's almost dinner time. Yes, Reward for somebody that, that, that turns you in, so you better be careful. I don't care about my $4,000 what. Can't nobody tell me I can't help my people. 
And it ain't trying to derail my mission. I got I got something for them. Oh, oh, all right, Miss Miss Mary. Well, you 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 keep, you keep it up, all right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 